Welcome back, everybody. Do you see the screen over here? I hope so. Do you see? Yes. Oh, yes. great. Now, yeah, today's lesson is going to be lists, conditionals, and loops. Last week, we have learned about strings and also different operators. But today, we will focus only on these three topics. Okay, so as you can see, I have this Visual Studio code. This is the code editor we use most of the time, all the time for me nowadays. So I have to create a folder and as usual, I call it week three. And uh, I write, or I mean, I create a file name and I call it lists.py because uh, Python file should be ending with .py extension. Great. Hey guys, we're about to talk list. So what is this list? Yeah, when you go to a shop, when you go to a shop, you have to take this some basket, right? Or a cart and in the cart, you may put items and your item could be a milk or meat or it could be coffee or it could be sugar or honey or maybe some vegetable. Yeah, so I mean fruit anyway. <laughs> Uh, Lace size of the gel, tomato and potato, tomato and uh, potato. I love the sound. It it has toe at the end. Tomato, potato. Yep. So as you can see, uh, we have some items here. How many items do we have? I don't know, but I can see that I have four items here and four items in the other side. Totally, we have eight items. So we call this list because it's a list. It's a kind of a to-do list or a shopping list. So how do we write a list? Maybe if you want to write an empty list, you can write like this. This is an empty list. Okay, then you can store it with somewhere like this. Uh, maybe if it is a shopping list, you can call it shopping. Shopping list. Yeah. Imagine you are now at the gate of a shop and while you are just grabbing the basket or the cart, okay? The shopping cart. So the cart is now empty. Let's try what it has. Print shopping list. Yeah, it's just... I'm empty, nothing. Let's see the lengths. I mean, lane shopping list. The size, what, how many items we have there? Let's just run zero items. Okay, now maybe it's better to add some items. Okay, milk. Oh yeah. Now you have milk and the item is one. Okay, maybe we can have meat. Okay, we can have also coffee if you want. Yeah, it is. And maybe you can have honey or sugar, or you can have tea or whatsoever. So you're actually, you're populating your cart. Yes, great. How many items? Six items. We call this list. Yeah, but is it just only strings? Can we also make a list of numbers? Why not? Numbers, nums, you can say, for instance, one two, three, four, five, six, whatsoever. As you can see, these are list of numbers, maybe names, names of famous people or names of infamous people, whatsoever, list just names of famous people. I can say uh, Bill S uh, and Steve, and I can say Donald, yes, Donald and of course, Sabine. Oh yeah, I'm in the list of famous people. So no, not really. But anyway, you can see that a list could be just a list of names, list of numbers, a list of some shopping 
items. How about list of countries? Do you remember my famous list of countries or my favorite? Yes, Finland, yes. And then we can go to uh, Sweden. After we arrive in Sweden, we may go to Denmark or maybe Norway. And then we got to Denmark and Iceland. Yeah. So just show me uh, a right one to me if you understood how to create a list. Everybody has to write uh, and uh, make it faster and then I can move to the next part. That's how we do. <clears throat> can you type one? And that's how I know if you got how to write a Python list, list of items, list of numbers. But can we mix different data types like this, for instance, a zero, one, maybe false, uh, maybe actually uh, true, or maybe, uh, and then name someone or Finland. And uh, again, uh, whatever another again maybe here name of people it could be bill and steve as you can see now a mixed i can just call it this mixed data types just i just gave it a random name for this as you can see, we can store different data types in a list. Most of the time, we just store the same kind of data types, but we can also do like this. Okay, now let's see how we can modify uh, a list. Okay, let's make it so simple. Have you seen this? Even let's even make it even more simpler. I have a list and in my list, I have three items. One, two, three, right? So we access this value using the index. It has an index. This one is located at zero and this one is at one and this one is at three. So it has index actually. I think the best way to show you if we go to the here uh, list, Yeah, for instance, have you seen this banana? So this is located at index zero, at index one, at index two, at index three. If we go from this side, from the left side, if we come from the other side, we should say minus one, minus two, minus three, the other way. Do you remember that we learned this also when we uh, were doing a string, yeah? So I may ask you, um, from this fruits, from this fruits array, if I, uh, with minus one, what do I get? Lemon. With minus one, what is the fruit I get? Lemon because if you start from the other side, it should be mine. If I use uh, one, what fruit do I get? Orange. Orange, yeah, that's straight. Uh, if I use minus two, what do I get? Mongo. Uh, you may think again, minus two. I said minus two. <clears throat> Orange again, because uh, we go, if you go the other side, it's minus one is lemon. Oh, oh, sorry, I think I made a mistake. Minus two, yeah, what's it, mango? Yeah. Minus one is lemon, minus two is mango, yeah. Yes, actually orange is minus three. Yeah, thanks, it was a mistake. Uh, great, uh, so I think let's write more of, uh, what's uh, happening here? My mouse is not moving. Okay, uh, <clears throat> now it's moving, let's uh, see. So similarly now, if I want you to 
axis uh, one, what do I use here? Zero, right? To access one, I have to use zero. Have you seen? Yeah. So if I want to access uh, two, what do I use? You tell me, zero, one. one. Yes. Okay, if I want to access the last, so what would be the last? Zero, one, two, two, right? So have you noticed some similarity be the last index and the length of the array is somehow similar, right? There is some connection. Have you seen it? Yeah, the last index is less than my, by minus one from the length of the, the index, the length of the array, right? The least. Have you noticed that? Yeah, what I'm, I'm trying to say, the length of nums, if you just print this out, it will be, let me just, what do you expect from this? I'm expecting three, right? Yes, because we have three items, zero, one, two, and, this one is two, it's because zero, because we start from zero, so zero, one, two. So to get the last index, we can do last index is equal to all the time, the length of the list minus one. The reason why minus one, because we start from, hmm, because we start counting from, Zero. 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 Great. Thank you. Print nums, then last index. So powerful. Yeah. So why we need last index? Because sometimes you never know the end. It could be one million or whatsoever. You don't know the last index. So the easy way to get the last index is actually you just Calculate the links using len minus one. Yeah. Okay. Another way you can also use counting from the right side. If I want to get out three for by counting from the right side, what would be what would be the index I have to put here? Minus one. As you can see, I'm getting also three. Print uh, nums, and if I use minus two, zero, I mean, minus one, minus two, so it's going to be uh, two, as you can see. And if you go print nums minus three, and it's going to be one. Great. Now you know how to get one item. Uh, but this item is so small that <clears throat> now for uh, five, okay, now we have more. So based on, now I, I, I add some additional items. What will be the value of this? Because the last item is now five. Five, yeah. Now this one is also five. Minus two is going to be four. Minus three is going to be three. Great. Uh, if you see, it will be a different value. Now let's learn slicing, slicing. How do we slice? That means uh, if I want to just slice some of the items, we can use uh, in Python. Okay, let's print nums. Uh, first, where to start? The starting index and the end index. Okay, let's start from zero. Okay, I'm starting from zero. Where do I want to stop? Maybe at three. If I put here three, it doesn't include this at the third. Actually, the index, is, this is not the third. Zero, one, two, three. The third index is this one. So now, if I do this slicing, it just slices out up to here, but it doesn't include the 
this one, the end. So I am about to get one, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. How about if I want to slice three to five? Okay, I can modify this. I am sure that I want to start from this. So zero, one, two. My starting point is going to be two. Where do I want to end? Zero, one, two, three, four. Four, if I just put this four, it doesn't include four, let me show you. So we got just three and four, so I have to make it five because it doesn't include five, but at least I can get up to four. So as you can see, three, four, five, great. But if you know really you want to slice out everything from here to the end, even you don't have to have the end uh, index. Great. This is uh, another way. And there's also a very smart way of reversing. Uh, reverse. If I want to reverse this, actually, uh, you can just use two, uh, colon and minus one. It gives you, yeah, have you seen? It just a reverse value. And you can also do uh, slicing in the other side. Um, maybe for instance, if you want, uh, but I think before that, maybe I can show you also, maybe if you don't leave some <clears throat> value from this, that means it starts from zero. If you don't put any starting point, it means starting from zero. Uh, so what do I slice using this? The first four indexes. So tell me the items, the value numbers. One, two, three, and four. Oh, it doesn't include four. One, two, three. Yes, one, two, three. Great, let's yeah. see. One, two, three, great. Yeah, now you got it. So print nums. How about if we do negative slicing? Uh, for instance, if you say minus, starting from uh, minus, uh, minus one, minus two, minus three. I can say minus three, two. If I don't put anything, that means starting from minus three to the end. That means three, four, five. Three, four, five. But if I'm interested only three and four, maybe I can say minus three, uh, minus three, minus two. Uh, so minus two, minus one. So this allows me to, to slice out this body. It doesn't include minus one, three and four. Yeah, now you got the trick. Oh yeah, we learned slicing. Great. Now let's learn modifying an array or a list. Let's modify. How do we modify? For instance, let's modify the first item 10. I mean, one to 10, or maybe one to whatever number. I can say, if I am writing nums zero, that means I'm referring to this value. And if you do something like this, okay, I'm repressing with 10 or 100. Actually, I am modifying the the existing one or replacing with this value. So now let's print nums because that's how we check if it's modified or not. So is it modified? Yeah, good. Yes, it is modified. Yes. And now you tell me how can I modify uh, three to 33. Maybe. Nums two. Mm -hmm. Nums two, that means zero, one, two, great. Mm, three. Yes. And now let's see if it's modified. Nums. Oh yeah, now you got the idea how to modify. So you have to first know the index and then you assign to 
the new value you want to replace the existing value. And that's how you modify. Great. We call this modifying. And you have noticed that a list can be modified and we call it also mutate. We have been mutating the data. Now let's actually remove item. Remove item from a list. Okay, how do we remove? We have a method nums.pop. This is the method. This one remove an item from this side. So based on this, <clears throat> uh, by the way, since we have been modifying, I want to comment this out, the modifying, because it alter the information. So I want to make my list as it, is, uh, as, uh, as it was. So now we have one, two, three, four, five. The last item is five. If I am doing this, actually, I am doing the last item. Pop allows you to remove the last item. So let's check print nums. Did it remove the last item? Yeah, yes. yes it removed, yes. But we can also use pop differently. If we give it an index, if you pass an index, it just remove the one with that index. For instance, if I say zero, that means instead of removing the last item, actually I'm removing the first item. Let's try. Have you seen it? Yeah, I hope so. Yes, yes. Okay, maybe let's try instead of the first one if we try to remove the second item. Now, as you can see, our two has been removed because two is at the second in uh, at the first index there like, because we count zero, one. So uh, did you get how to use pop guys? Write one for me if you got how to use pop. Pop, you can use just like this nuns and pop and it just remove the last item. Maybe I have to leave a remark here. Pop, remove the last item in a list. If an argument is not given or provided. Up, if you pass index like this, remove the an item, remove an item of a certain index. Yeah, this is how it works. Great. Now let's uh, stop also this one because it alters our list and we don't know how it was. Uh, now uh, I will move on to insert. Guys, you may want to insert some data here. How do you insert in between? You know, it, it could be here or here, wherever. Do we have a method? Uh, first, let's see if our list is intact, you know, if it's not modified. Yeah, as you can see, it's just intact, it's not modified. Now let's add something. In between, I can say nums.insert, Python got insert. And what do you want to insert and where actually you can insert items um, anywhere you want. For instance, if you want to put it uh, here, at, for instance, I want to put uh, 22 at index uh, one. So I'm expecting actually. One, twenty-two, two, because it it just get in there. Let's try. Print nuts. What's happening here? Oh yeah, I think the other way. The index and the value. Yes. As you can see, where the index and then the value. 
So as you can see now, uh, at one index, I replaced unit two and two has been pushed a bit. So now I want you to, let's just comment this out. I have to comment this out. And I want you to uh, insert maybe 400 uh, here. Uh, maybe I can tell you. I want you to insert 400 between two and three. Mm -hmm. I want you to insert 400 between two and three. You tell me the index. So that means actually 400 is going to have this, I mean, this place. So zero, one, two. two. Yes. Two and then 400 or whatsoever value you want. It could be four or five or maybe uh, let's check whatever. Yeah, just print. Uh, and then nuts. I instead of just writing some gibber jabber, I am modified, I am inserted. Inserted, yes, let's see. Detune two and three. Oh yeah, yeah, it does. So now let's just replace this with something else and better data, for instance, uh, but whatever, whatever you want to replace. Oh yeah, great. So we managed to insert also this. Yeah, another mm, is actually, can we delete items? Yeah, we can also delete items using the del method. Uh, I think I can see some of the methods because I don't want to uh, miss anything. Okay, we have covered this unpacking list, we, I, I will come to that later. Slicing item from list, we have covered that. Modifying list, checking item in a list. Yes, this is very good, uh, by the way. If you remember, we love countries, right? Oh yeah, uh, let me show you here. Uh, do you think we have Finland in this country? Yes, we have. You can check actually Finland in the countries. And this should give us Boolean. What does that mean when I say this will give us a Boolean, guys? Yes, it delete actually, yes. It's deleting it, yeah. Pop delete, yes. Uh, Boolean means true or false. So as you can see, we have Finland in this list. And if you just do this, Yes, it's going to be true. Do we have Russia in this list? Yeah, I think it's so easy to see, right? We don't have Russia, so it should be false. So this uh, in actually help us to know if something is in the list or not. Okay, it's, yeah, just you can check for, um, I mean, print, for instance, two in, uh, Three, four, five, eight, two. Uh, what do you think the value of this? Am I going to get true or false? True. Yes, true, great. How about if I change this to something like this? That's a string, so it's false. Yeah, it should be false, great. Yep, now you got the point. Mm. Adding, adding items to the list. Yeah, this is very important. Yeah, guys, now again, you have just created your shopping list over here. Uh, but let's imagine that our shopping list, let's create again an empty shopping list. Shopping list again, I'm creating it over here. So. How many items do you have in your shopping list? You tell me now, this. Zero. Zero, but guys, my questions are so simple. So, yeah, yeah. so, so uh, don't think too much, okay? Don't uh, to think too much, yeah? Extra power to process, so damn simple. Yeah, it's nothing. There's nothing in the just uh, shopping, I mean, 
cart, nothing. Now, let's start actually adding items. We can use the append method and let's start appending maybe milk, yeah? And check, of course, after we append, we have to check uh, if we have something inside. Oh yeah, have you seen? Now we have milk. Okay, how about if we add also shopping list, add maybe, what shall, maybe we can add, but also submit. Uh, yes, what, nice. So guys, this is what Sajad and Taina were talking about. When you see something like this, don't be frustrated. So have you seen? Uh -huh. I'm just thinking so differently that I am trying to use add to add something. Instead, it should be a pin. Yeah. List object has no attribute add. That means Python doesn't know this add in a list object. So I have to just change it to a pin. Yeah. So now, as you can see, I, can, I have milk and meat. Shopping list again, maybe I can add an add additional, maybe uh, some coffee, or maybe I can just replicate this a couple of times and change the value. If you have coffee, you should have some honey or sugar uh, to sweeten, and maybe some mango if you are, and I don't know, some yogurt. It's hard to write for me, and let's see. Oh yeah, so we have some items. You, we used the add method to add items to our shopping cart. Yeah, when we go to the shop, we used to, I mean, we had an empty shopping uh, cart, but now when we are about to pay at the cashier, we've got this. Does it have price? No. Actually, at some point, we will add price to these products. Yeah, that is where dictionary caps. Yeah, but now just we have list of shopping items. Great. And we use the add, the append method. Insert items into a list. We have seen that. Okay, remove items from a list. By the way, uh, we have used the pop. We can also use the remove item. What's the difference between remove and uh, if you remember when you use pop, if you use just pop, you're removing the last item. Yeah. If you use pop with that index, you're removing some item with that index. But now, for instance, from the shopping list, Let's remove, what do you like to remove guys from the shopping list? In the shopping list, you have sugar, tea, honey, coffee, meat, or maybe I think some of you might be uh, not into sugar. Let's remove the sugar, okay? So you have to use the name, the item. Remove and the name of the item. And then let's see, again, print shopping list. Uh, I just figured out that appending an item to an existing list, it adds it to the end of the list. Yes, it adds to the end of the list. That's true, uh, as I said. Okay, now let's see. And why? Where is the list? Oh, remove, um, maybe. Oh yeah, because it has been removed, uh, uh, wait. Where's, where did I, yeah, I can. Yeah, that should be. I should have somewhere. First, I have to append it. And now, as you can see, I used to have sugar here, right? Here, I removed it. But is it only just sugar? I can remove maybe honey. Maybe if you guys are not into honey, just let's move the honey. And if we see, I used to have honey here, but now the honey is removed. So the difference between pop and remove, we use the remove method and we have to give the name of the item we remove for like this as an argument, yeah? For instance, we have name of famous people. If I want to remove a sabine, I have to say names, 
remove, and I have to call my name. Yeah, like that. But if I want to remove my name with the pop, I can say names dot pop uh, because it's at the end, it will be removed. Or I can also give an index. Maybe I can say zero, one, two, three. This also can remove my name. Both can do the same. Okay, great. Now let's move on. Removing items using Dell. Yeah, so we have this different method also to remove some items using Dell. As you can see, do you see here we have different fruits? Banana, orange, mango, lemon, kiwi, and lime. What do we have at zero, at index zero? You tell me. Banana. Banana. And after that, if we say Dell, this means actually, hey, delete the banana. So the result will be something like this. Now we don't have the banana anymore. And then again, Dell fruits one. Because okay. now the banana has been removed. And uh, of course, if we don't run, I think it would be good if I just run this for you separately and you will have a chance to see. Then we can say Dell, I mean, that means it's delete. And if you want to remove, for instance, the banana, this is something we do. And we can check print uh, fruits. And as you can see something. But how about if I say three? That means I'm referring to zero, one, two, three. I am referring to lemon. And when I'm printing, actually, I should do that. Yeah, there is no lemon in my list. Yeah, great. So now you know how to use the delete. Lastly, we just see clearing. Sometimes you may not want to see anything. So uh, fruits, uh, sorry, fruits, and then clear. And then let's see print fruits. Yeah, so it's empty. Clear means just empty, flashing everything. But actually, clear is almost the same as reassigning it. This is almost the same as you can do fruits and you can just assign it to an empty list again. Yeah, either this or fruits list. This is also empty, by the way. This, this means empty list. Let's see, boom. as you can see, empty list. You can declare a list either like this, either like this, or like this, okay? Yep. If then the joining list, yeah, joining list is so important because now, for instance, I may have uh, nums, maybe zero, maybe I can say positive nums. So these are the positive numbers. I have one two, three, four, five, six, whatever, you can continue. Uh, then uh, zero, maybe I can have zero separately like this and maybe negative numbers, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five and minus six whatever, you can continue if you have time writing. So I want to mix all this number. Yeah, you can just do, uh, the mix will be integers. I call them the integers, positive. I think actually positive nums plus zero plus the negative numbers. But most of the time, the negative numbers start seeing the other way in this direction, sorry for that. And the zero here, yeah, so let's put it this way, negative and then zero, yeah, and then positive, print integers. Have you seen? Yeah, 
minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, 0, 1, 2, 3. Of course, most of the time we write the numbers in different way, but it's okay. Of course, before I add them, for instance, I can do some operation. If you remember, I can reverse it, uh, but you know, oh yeah, have you seen? Now I managed to change the order minus six, minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one. Yeah, so it's uh, integers. So the point here is if you have some uh, two or for instance, A, one, two, three, four. And if you have B, uh, five, six, seven, eight, whatsoever, you can just create C by just plus, by adding two of them. And you will have just again a list. Let's see C. So C is just a mix of this or the union of this. Yeah, so simple, right? Great, you just add them together. Yeah, that's what, and I have a very good example, oh, guys, a very good example I made. I'm very proud of this and I will show you and you will be so happy to, to look at this example. Okay, guys, you have a fruit, a fruits, list of fruits, and you have a, a vegetables, right? So if you mix fruit and vegetables, what do you get? Of course, fruit and vegetables. So let's uh, print that. Fruit, fruits, and vegetables. So we have, yeah, so the, the point is in, instead of just putting the, the fruits in a different bo uh, bowl and uh, the vegetables in a different bowl, you just mix together and now everything is in one list or in one cart or something. Oh yeah, so counting items in a list, okay. Uh, for instance, I may show you here, banana, orange, mango, and lemon. Um, we don't have repeated items, right? Once. How many times orange do I have? Once, right? Uh, but here, as you can see, ages of my students, some are 22, 19, 24, 25, 26, 24, 25, 24. Oh, some number is repeated. Yeah, for instance, if you count 24, how many times do I get it? One, two, three times, right? Yeah. So we can also count how many times uh, an item occurs, yeah? If you remember, is it clear, guys, the count? Yeah, it's so simple. Maybe I can show you here. Maybe it, this makes things clear. Print. I may ask before I show you the result, age.count, uh, 22. How many times do you need to occur in this list? Only once. Yeah, it should give us one, yes. But how about if I check, for instance, 25, how many times do I get it? Twice. Twice, yeah. and the 24 is going to be, let's see, well, three times. Great. So you got it. That's another is index of an item. Yes. Index of an item. If you remember, we have learned also index and related things uh, when we learn a string. Now let's see <coughs> the index. Um, uh, we can use the same age example here. For instance, uh, what is the index of it's what's the index of uh instead what is the index of 22 you tell me zero yes zero so python also should tell me it's zero okay uh print edges index uh, 25, maybe, how many 25s do I have now? As you can see, uh, this one and this one. So it will just check the first one, zero, one, two, three. So I'm expecting three here. Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, 
I think that works with string. Yeah, that's how, but how about if we don't have like the value? Let's try if 100. Yes, that's the problem. If you don't have the item, it ends up like this. How about if we use find? Do we have find? Nope, we don't have find. That is, uh, it's something, but if you remember, we have find in strings. So if you are checking index with a list, first you have to be sure that it exists. So I can check first, okay. Uh, but if you don't know, if also we didn't learn conditionally yet, so I will come to that later after we cover some topics. And unless otherwise, it will be hard. Then this reverse, as you guys showed you, for instance, I have aged, let's print the aged, everyone's age over here. And as you can see, we have seen how to reverse like this with and minus one allow us to reverse actually. Uh, of course, I have to print after that. Well, actually I'm printing it there already. It was starting from, yeah, it's reversed now, as you can see. Um, but another way of reversing also, it ha there's always a reverse method. Print uh, age reverse. But guys, this one, this one is mutate. It mutates. First, I have to do the reverse and let's print age. Yeah, it's reversed. So uh, I would explain this, the reverse. I would uh, recommend you to avoid using this reverse if you don't know exactly what data mutation is, data mutation, and we will talk about mutation later. Mutation, what does that mutation? Now we modified, the original data is not anymore the same, okay? So uh, we have to be sure um, when to mutate and when you don't have to. If we don't know, then it's somehow hard. Sorting list items. Uh, there is two way of sorting again with sort and sorted. Okay, by the way, let me just comment out this one because it just muted my data. If I say so, uh, age dot sort, now this also sort this value from uh, smaller to bigger, but let's see, age, but it's mutated again. As you can see, uh, it, it has been, the original data is not anymore the same. So another best way to do the same thing is actually sort it. Uh, this is already a built-in function, sorted, and you pass age. And then this doesn't mutate the original. And you have to, of course, sort it age. You have to store it as in a different variable. Sorted age. Now let's see. Yes, it's sorted. And also the original value is also the same. Yeah. Uh, so we have sorted, uh, we, ha we have seen sorted and sort. Uh, it, might be, uh, it might be difficult to understand now uh, between the two things, uh, but if you just understand at least, uh, we can use the sort or sorted method to sort, that's good enough. Uh, here, in addition, you can use this reverse, uh, true or false. I think we can also use here. Uh, maybe I can show you here. Not here. No, let me show you first the result. The result, uh, the result, as you can see, is ascending order. So we can say uh, here. Where is sorry here? It takes two parameters: reverse, reverse true or false. Yeah, if we say reverse true, what's the 
yeah, as you can see now, we have reversed it. Reversed means from uh, biggest to lowest. But if you just put it that default, it gives you ascending order. If you want an ascending order, reverse. Can we use this too? I am not sure. Yeah, I think it's just reverse. Reverse true. Right. Yeah, I think we're done with lists. Yeah, we have covered quite a lot of methods in list and it's very important to revise this part and go through this exercise if you want to familiarize yourself because it really helps you to remember the available list methods and operations. Good. We will continue to conditionals soon.